Good day, everyone. We are Manila Base, and here's our Commodity System Report for seaweed. Um, seaweed is the most important component in a marine ecosystem food chain. Um, animals that are sitting at the bottom of the food chain and has no other way of hunting its prey eat, eat them. Um, in the Philippines, there are more than 800 species that are available, but only four of them are, are being utilized and are economically important, namely Yukima, Kappa Ficus, Garcilia spp, and Calerpa lentilifera species. As a third major producer in 2017, the Philippines has produced 1.4 million metric tons of seaweed and, at, and valued at $174 million. Agribusiness System Framework. Uh, in this presentation, we will discuss the difference of systems the seaweed undergoes before it reaches the consumers as a full product. In this presentation, we will discuss the overview of the commodity, the agribusiness system components, integrated analysis of the commodity, the conclusions of the commodity, and recommendations how, on how to improve the status of the commodity. Uh, the overview of the commodity. History of the commodity. In the 1960s, exportation of a type of red seaweed called Kappa Ficus, locally known as Agalagal, started during the time Started. During that time, it was all harvested from the wild and was not cultivated by farmers. Moving on to 1966, Philippine Marine College was established that helped Dr. Maxwell Dolly from the University of Hawaii and Mr. Vicente Alvarez to conduct nationwide ecological survey for potential seaweed farms. In 1967, the Philippine Marine College provided 45,000 pesos to start the first commercial farming trial for Kappa Ficus in Antique with an area of 2,500 square meters using nylon lines and bamboo floats. Five years later, the first family farm in Tawi Tawi was established and has produced 536 tons in their first production. And in just two years' time, it became the largest Kappa Ficus farming area producing at 12,000 to 14,000 tons of seaweed. Seaweed farms are easy to manage investments are affordable and has so much potential that it helped the rapid growth of the industry in the Philippines for 30 years, 30 years until the steady decline of production in 2011 due to climate change and other natural pests and diseases. So the place of origin of the commodity and its status. There are only a few countries who engaged and pioneered on the farming of seaweeds and one of which is the Philippines alongside with Indonesia. Seaweed covers the 30% of the total fishery production in 2008 and plays a significant role for people who live in coastal areas. It also occup occupies a huge part in the export market which reach a value of 190,171,898 dollars in 2017. And then the socio-economic importance. Um, seaweed has quite a few uses. Uh, it acts as a human food, uh, industrial, biomedical, and agricultural processes. And there it Alma. actually had the first recognition with a unique commercial harvest. Also, a hectare of ha husbandry would generate a farmer's income that is about five to six times the minimum wage. So let's move on to agribusiness system components. Food sector. Uh, our four major commercial export products of the Philippines, namely Yukima, Kappa Ficus, Gracilaria, SPP, and Colerpa lentilifera species are suitable in the Philippine coastal waters and are observed to have high growth vigor in either deep or shallow water areas. The coastal waters the seaweed is grown in must have 27 to 35 parts per thousand salt salinity and must be away from fresh water. It is to say, the site must be clean and free from contaminants. Water current speed should be between 20 to 40 meters per minute so that there can be fast water turnover, just enough not to not damage the farm and continue the production. Lastly, factors like the accessibility of transportations and availability of labor, labor and other materials must also be considered in choosing the site of seaweed cultivation. 
the volume of utilization and prices of input. Free planting activities contributed the highest percentage, which is 69% of the total cost per kilogram that is equal to 10 pesos and 4 centavos. This mainly resulted due to the cost of seedling. On the other hand, planting activities gave the most gave the lowest cost contribution to the total cost per kilogram with a 5% or 48 centavos per kilogram. Materials and labor costs were the highest contributors to the subtotal of each major activity. 67% of the total cost per kilogram was contributed by the material cost, which include planting materials, wood stakes, straws, and, and fuel followed by labor costs, which contributed 60% to the total cost per kilogram. Overall, the average cost of trading dried seaweed is valued at 16 pesos and 26 centavos. Moving on to the sources of inputs. As mentioned earlier, seaweed only needs a minimum cut capital requirements. It does not need fertilizer or feed for it to overcome certain environments. One of the things to consider in seaweed farming is the site of the farm and good site means seaweeds grow well. Usually, a good site can be found in areas far from river mount with water temperature of 20 to 32 degrees Celsius, where species of seaweeds are already growing and flourishing. Institutions conduct different training programs for farmers. These farmers are equipped with enough knowledge and management skills in order for them to properly cultivate their seaweed farms. In terms of seed stocks, commercial seeds are not important in seed cultivation. Seaweeds can grow on their own and it also be cultivated vegetatively. Lastly, in seaweed cultivation, only simple technology is being employed. Equipment utilized in planting and harvesting are also easy to find. They can be found in the locality and are cost friendly. Ropes are used to hold the seaweeds and are supported by either wooden stakes or a rack. In some seaweed farms, nets are used instead of ropes. Thank you. Next is our farm sector. So 50% of aquaculture production comes from seaweed. This was traced from the 130 nursery operators, five multinational processors, and nine local processors with the capacity summed up to 38,000 metric tons. The PSA reported 278,000 metric tons of the country's seaweed production during the third quarter in 2017. Here is a graph of the Philippine seaweed production trends from 1996 to 2015. So the cultural management practices consist of the net method, floating monoline method, floating bamboo method, and bottom line monoline method. The technological developments in the farm sector includes the advanced research projects agency energy of the U.S. Department of Energy, and the study on the pot on biofuels of the U.S. macroalgae industry, and the UPLD Biomex seaweeds drying technology. Processing sector, the different product lines and processed products of seaweed. Seaweed is a commodity with many uses. There are products that we may not know that are made up of or has seaweeds as it, its main ingredient. Seaweed can, only, can be consumed fresh or dried. In the food and beverage industry, the products of, from seaweed along with other ingredients are very important. Carrageenan, the main component of these foods and drinks as thickening agent and some agin or alginates from some brown seaweed to be used in our baked food. It can also be used in high-end beauty products that are not only effective but also a more natural formulation than the ones that we are used to have been growing in demand. Seaweed has been found out to be a great source in making this personal care and cosmetic products. It is said to moisturize, tighten the skin, and even prevent allergies that is problem to many when it comes to makeup. Lastly, traditionally in Chinese medicine, hot water is used to extract seaweed nutrients and use it for treatment of cancer. It is also used by neighboring Asian countries to treat goiter and other glandular problems since 300 BC. 
it is now generally used in our diets for its low sodium content and it's great for our hearts due to its appetite suppression and cholesterol reduction properly. Next is our manufacturers and scale of operations. Um, in the Philippines, seaweed manufacturers form an association called the Seaweed Industry Association of the Philippines or SEAP. After it was established on September 19, 1985, it has been playing a major role in development and improvement of the industry in the country. The association is composed of exporters, processors, farmers, and traders, which have the same vision of making the seaweed industry be known locally and internationally. Some of the companies and corporations that process seaweed, which are part of SEAP, are Cardio Texturing Solution, Geno Products Philippines Corporation, Ingredients and Gums Corporation, Inc., and many others. Volume and value of products. The Philippines is recorded as one of the largest producers of seeds and gained the third spot in plants in 2007. The total production within 2015 are shown in the left. Uh, out of 1.57 million metric tons valued at 8.32 million pesos, 63% of the total production are processed into semi-refined chips, and 13% are exported raw, and the remaining 22% are processed into refined carotene. The Philippines gained the largest world market in semi-refined, alkali-treated chips and raw-dried seaweed. It also ranked in sec second in semi-refined and recorded fourth in refined carotene. In 2003, the Philippines exported 27,540 metric tons of raw dried seaweed valued at 15 million pesos, 67,330. The table, the table shows the prices of processed seaweed products in the world market. Refined carrageenan is valued at $11. Semi-refined carrageenan for human consumption is at $6. The semi-refined ones for pet food is at $3.25. Lastly, Alkali-treated carrageenan is valued at $2.80. Moving on to our marketing sector, we have marketing channels and volume absorbed. The marketing channel of Philippine seaweed starts from the farmer, who is the producer, who may also serve as the collector or assembler. These farmers would sell the produce to the small traders who act as a middleman or those that are small-scale assemblers or wholesalers. And from the local traders, it would be sold to the large traders who are mainly agents and finally to the exporters or the processors at times serving also as exporters. And for the marketing strategy, the seaweed industry provides a wide variety of products, whether food or fertilizers and thickening agents like hydrocolloids. And seaweed has a wide availability in both local and foreign market. In 2017, the price per kilogram reached 5.83 pesos in 2017. There were quite a few campaigns outside the country, like the Interpid Foundation, which partnered with the Climate Foundation and have promoted the breeding of seaweeds and funding. Here is a graph of trends in the prices. It reached its highest at 7.13 pesos per kilograms in March 2014. At the beginning of the, at, of the 20th century, prices of seaweed reached its lowest at 3.34 pesos per kilogram. The perception of the wiser consumers that plant-based products are healthier and better for the body has been widespread that can only make the seaweed industry grow. It has an average price of 5.7 pesos per kilogram from the year 2000 up to September of 2018. The said the world demand is valued at around 5.5 to $6 billion and having Japan, USA, and China as the top consumers. While local production is valued at 9.59 billion pesos, producing a total of 1.73 739 metric tons of seaweed. 
Shown here is the commercial seaweed market size in the U.S. projecting 2016 to 2027. Seaweed and utilization of other algae products will just continue to rise. Veganism and healthy eating habits are turning more to be a lifestyle to cope up with the trends and different animal welfare groups. This, in turn, will surely propel the global demand for seaweed and other al algae products. Technological advancements, different research conducted, government intervention, and rising investments will likely escalate the market growth of the commercial seaweed in the coming years. Lastly, is a diagram of export and import of the commodity. The data was reported at 35.490 metric ton in 2017. This records a decrease from the previous number of 39.850 metric tons for 2016. Next is the support sector. Institutions such as Seaweed Industry Association of the Philippines and the Department of Trade and Industry serves as a support system for the commodity. Development programs and projects are also implemented to help farmers to try and be globally competitive in terms of volume and quality of production. Development projects were in place for the major stakeholders, namely farmers and producers, to increase the growth of the seaweed industry. However, the seaweed industry is still not popular in the local markets. Most of the raw materials are exported the local manufacturers need more support from these institutions to thrive in the local market. This also means that there is a shortage in investors, resulting to lack of funds for expansion and quality control of seaweed. Lastly, recommendations were also formulated for the different commercial varieties of seaweed produced locally. Recommendations such as degree and non-degree degree training programs for our farmers to increase the number of skilled personnel and upgrading the, the facilities used in production and processing that can only be possible through government funding and investments. Also, proper farming practices that follows our sustainable development goals is a must. Other agro services also face different problems. These services have problems in improving and maximizing resources, analyzing the production component, developing the parts of the step-based process, and problems in the, pro in the management component. Strategies in solving these different areas of concerns all, all boils down to the to first improvement of the technologies and facilities used, more drive in our information and educational campaign, and lastly, conducting researches for the health management of seaweeds and better site assessments. Next is the integrated analysis which summarizes the strengths and weaknesses and the opportunities and threats in each subsector. One of the strengths of the industry is that it is capable of sustaining the global demand for seaweed. Also, inputs are not that hard to find since they are available in the locality where seaweed farms are situated. Aside from that, Raw materials are relatively inexpensive as well as the labor. The processing itself is also cost efficient and does not take a lot of money. All of these processes are strongly supported by the SIAP. On the other hand, the industry lacks adequate and proper working space for laborers, making it one of its weaknesses. Also, Many seaweed producing areas in the Philippines are dirty and polluted, which is really harmful for the seaweed plants. Technologies and machineries used for farming and processing are also not that well performing than those of what they have in other countries. Well, we are in the Philippines after all. And aside from these, there are only limited number of husbandries and the industry lacks strong value proposition. The whole industry also focuses more on export markets than in the local markets. Fortunately, the seaweed industry in the Philippines is blessed with large production of fast-growing seaweeds by SEA FDEC. The industry is well supported by private and government institutions. They invest more on equipment, diversify new products, and generate income for the development and improvement of the industry. Also, sustainable innovations and digital agricultural revolution 
are integrated in each sectors. However, there are some issues that are threatening the industry, one of which is the unstable weather conditions. We all know that the Philippines is usually visited by typhoons and other national calamities. Economically speaking, threats in the industry include the fluctuating market and demand and the unstable price patterns. Though several institutions are helping the industry, it seems like their support is not enough for the whole sectors involved since they mainly focuses on processing and manufacturing alone. And lastly, it is a challenge for all parties involved to be known in the local market since seaweeds is not that popular in the Philippines. With all the data presented, it is factual that the Philippines is a country full of potential because of its abundant aquatic resources. We can derive from all the evidences that seaweed is not a well-known commodity in the Philippines. Unlike many other aquatic resources that we have, seaweed's popularity rank might be the least. Tons and tons of seaweeds are harvested each year, but these are directly exported internationally. This realization led to the second conclusion. Seaweed industry focuses more on exportation. The Philippines is the third largest seaweed producer. According to PSA, 43,000 tons of algae and carrageenan were exported in 2016 alone. This is valued at 200 million US dollars. At least five companies in the Philippines are processing seaweed that are directly exported. The capacity of the plants of these companies ranges from 12,000 metric tons to 25,800 metric tons. Third conclusion is that the Philippines are always visited by typhoons and is polluted. Pollution in the production area affects the amount of produce which led to losses. The Philippines recorded a steady decline in production due to the occurrence of typhoons and other cultural complications. Thus, the presenters recommend the following. Continuation and revitalization of BFAR's development program. Invest more on research and development on the impact of seaweed farming in health and environment. And produce or promote the commodity more with proper management practices. Specifically, the input sector needs to focus more on research and development on biological studies. As for the production sector, the key players can implement health management practices and expand their farming areas. The processing sector can also adapt to the changing environment through practicing modern strategies on maximizing seaweed products as well as the utilization of byproducts. To fulfill the gap in the marketing sector, the presenters recommend the establishment of information database and also initiate effective trade mechanisms. Lastly, they can intensify the promotion or market matching for the seaweed commodity.